Hello everyone, Advocate of Games here with another Advocate Discusses. This is all about man-made content. And the major focus of the video will be fan art and fan fiction, because those are the ones that I personally engage in myself for my personal hobbies in that sense. So generally I approve of the idea and I definitely enjoy it plenty of it out there. I just disapprove of the, I don't really care for the more mature whatever stuff that is more it goes against what the source material sets up without actually having a reason to do so. This stuff is made without justification. But the thing is the best part of fan made content is when the creators of the source material actually see the stuff and they they actually like it. So that's pretty cool. Even more so when the, the writers of a Disney movie or something, they actually make some of their own fan art and stuff for the actors within a movie. Although that can easily be taken way too far. <laughs> so not always a good thing. Anyway, starting off, I'll be, talk I'll be talking a little bit about my thoughts on fan art. I my terms of you know, fan art that I enjoy or whatever. The stuff that sticks to the source material, reasonably close to the source material. That is something that I try to do myself. I try to have some kind of reference up that way I know I'm getting it right. And besides that I definitely enjoy alternate interpretations or just more real life or real semi realistic depictions of a fictional character when it makes sense or when it's actually believable. Something that doesn't tend to not come out in a nightmare before, in a way. You know, that that kind of idea. I also like fan comics. I've read, I've read some good ones. Although that that, of course, does order onto fan fiction, because a lot of times, it's really comics, that's its own form of storytelling, and there are cases where fan fiction is really just a visual adaptation of someone else's story, but still, it's pretty cool. And once again, I don't care for the adult or into content or whatever, excessive violence, things like that. Especially when it's just not called for, or not needed in the sense of the source material. And switching over to fan fiction. Same stuff I said about fan art apply here. Which I prefer stuff that stays reasonably close to the source material, unless it's like an alternate universe kind of story. In that case, if it makes sense within the context of the story that you're trying to make compared to the source material, then it's fine. Just be reasonable about it. So, really, some, some kinds of stories that I like to read are generally I like the adventure, the slice of life kind of stories. There's some seasons, some franchises, and some of them are pretty well for that. But especially so, I like the what if kinds of stories, alternate universe, where something explores an alternate ending to a TV episode, or alternate, an alternate idea of how something could have happened. And I also, I also like reading about like a character if some aspect of their life and played out differently, or they have made a decision, different decision, how would they end up, how would their story end up, it's pretty nice. The various story elements that I enjoy in terms of fan fiction are things that lead to a cliffhanger, a sensible cliffhanger, or 
even some kind of flashback you can learn about the backstory of a character or a scenario. Things like that when done well, done correctly, I definitely enjoy those. And plot twists, same deal, when they're built up correct correctly, yeah, it can leave an impact, it can really make the story memorable in that sense. So stuff that I am kind of neutral on, the idea of grimdark or creepypasta type stories, if they're excessively violent or mature or whatever, for like character assassination being a popular term, where you take a, a normally cheerful or pleasant character and you rewrite them as a complete lunatic, no. <laughs> if there's a reason for them being depicted that way, like if it's an alternate universe or something, okay, but at least make it believable, have some kind of explanation to it. From there, stuff that I don't really enjoy, it's kind of personal nitpicks or whatever. Mechanically speaking, other story elements and whatnot, stories that have a fairy suit type character or an author avatar type character or just things that happen way too predictably or too conveniently or pacing issues, things like that. So the idea of author avatar character or fairy suit characters where typically it is the main character of a story and they're basically indestructible in some manner, or they're somehow perfect, or if elements of a story or plot points just play out too perfectly just for the sake of convenience, or if something happens just because something that happens with no build-up or no explanation to it, or flashbacks that happen all too frequently, or just stuff like that that's just not needed at the given point in the story. Yeah, that, that bogs down the story is just cringe-worthy at times, and it's very bad. I've, re I've come across some of those stories that are like that, and they... Yeah. So otherwise... backtracking a bit to another kind of story that I like. Crossovers. When those are done right, then you have different worlds coming together or something. If it's the if it's got a sensible story, if it's something that can realistically happen, yeah, it's a fair game. But otherwise it's best to avoid unless you know what you're doing. So anyway, back to back to the dark side. Mechanical issues within a story. Poor spelling, poor grammar, just mistakes everywhere, or little to no indentation, or no use of paragraphs, dialogue issues, formatting issues. Even good stories can suddenly be ruined or bogged down by a lot of those kinds of issues. It is imperative to proofread your work before you share it. And if you can't go through and fix your spelling or anything, have someone help you. Preferably have a proofreader or a beta reader or something. Just someone on hand if you ever have any questions. And even just helping with pacing or other elements of the story, helping you put a thing together. Don't expect a person to write a story for you, unless you're trying to do a collab and you're just trading off between chapters, but no. If you have a story, you need help with some aspect of it, ask for help, but in the end, it has to be your own effort put into it. Otherwise, it's just laziness writing a story and posting it without taking the time to look through it, get all the mistakes out of there. I've come across plenty of those, and they're not fun to read. So, uh, next.
next item on the list. Other kinds of content, fan games, fan music, even fan made videos. And this kind of goes like fan made music videos, AMV, stuff like that. So parody, in the sense of videos, parody content, or long form or news related content, or even just even just podcasts, stuff like that. So. Fan games, actually you've got like various ROM hacks, Pokemon ROM hacks, or fan made games, Super Mario hacks, all sorts of things in that vein. Fan music, there's remixes, covers, and then there's just original tracks inspired by a TV series or something. There's way too many examples to really list. There's a lot of good creators out there. There's even just individual tracks that are notable or famous in some way. Fan videos, I mentioned, there's parody content, there's music based content, there's long form or discussion or theory based videos. There's all kinds of stuff out there in that sense. And there's a lot of good stuff out there. There's a lot that's, you know, like someone sharing their opinion or a review of something. Just, there's a lot. Sometimes they can make a really strong argument, something that really makes you think. So, next up original characters, or OCs for short. There's a lot of franchises out there that just lend themselves perfectly to this. Most notably stuff like the Dragon Ball series, especially with Xenoverse and Xenoverse 2. Or the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon series. Is that just the way the game story is. You're playing a character who went from human world to Pokemon world, and they gotta help with a crisis there. And... It's especially cool when someone can come up with their own character, whether it's like a roleplay form even. They can draw a picture of the character, they can give them a really deep backstory, they can just give all these details to them. And those are especially notable, especially memorable. So I like those. So next up is a controversial topic in of itself shipping. Two kinds of that, actually. There's French shipping, which is, as just as it sounds, you are taking two characters that meet up and become friends, or taking two characters that are already good friends, but then something happens, they just sort of reevaluate everything, everything, and they're friends again, sometimes they're better friends than before. The other kind of shipping, this is the controversial one, this is the romantic version. Two characters become romantically involved, or at least romantically interested. Typically, the more believable aspect is character A has feelings for character B, and they sort of talk it over. But, but really, I've read plenty of stories where Character A has feelings for character B, and conveniently, the feelings are mutual. It doesn't always happen that way. One person has feelings for another, and it's not always mutual. So, that's why it's typically... Why it either takes a while for the romance to actually happen, or if it just ends up being a friendship in the end. And case of making it believable, so sometimes the story is two characters get together, other times they've already got together and they're just kind of working everything out, trying to figure out what they want from all of it and go from there. So in terms of friendshipping, there's really no restrictions. Anyone they can become friends with in a sense. 
but the romantic side of it, I have a few opinions on that. Generally, I stay away from it. I don't really get involved with that, but in the event I do, in two criteria that I follow, first rule, golden rule, if it's an official pairing, that's it. I don't try to head cannon my own pairing into it, because I know there's already a pairing for that. The other rule, if there is no official pairing, I go by something that makes sense. In the, in the sense of the two characters getting together some in some manner. If it makes sense, then it's fair game. But examples of times when it would not make sense is to be perfectly blunt. There are two notable cases. One is when it's two characters with a huge age gap between them. And also when you have a sense of a crossover, you're trying to romantically pair character A from one franchise with character B from a completely unrelated franchise. That just does not work. It does not matter how similar or how compatible they may be. It, it just, no. no. If you're going to pair two characters, keep it within the same franchise or within the same universe. Or even just if there's a case with certain toy lines or something that have multiple incarnations. Yeah. Keep it reasonable. So now we get to a popular or unpopular topic that I kind of alluded to before. Fan fiction versus headcanon. There is a difference. What is that difference? Fan fiction, self-explanatory, you get an idea of something, or you wonder, like, oh, you got this particular character, or you have an idea of how something could have happened, and you kind of go into that. Fan fiction gives you ways to kind of give it your own possible idea. It's quite open-ended, especially if the source material was a cliffhanger and you're continuing on from a cliffhanger or something. So, headcanon is effectively, just as I said before, you've got your own idea, it's some kind of fan theory, and you're trying to pass it off or brainwash yourself into thinking that it's hardcore fact. Especially disregarding any official word or pretending that it's something that could happen. And in that sense, yeah, it's a very controversial topic and something that's done way too much. And even more painful, a more painful aspect of this is stuff like game theory. Some of the stuff said in those videos is just ridiculously stupid. Where it's taking theories and it's shooting and stuff is just like, no, where is this coming from? You have no proof, you're just pulling stuff out of thin air just to make an argument that was weak or non-existent right from the start. And a good, another popular example of headcanon is when you take a character and you convince yourself that they have this real dark backstory or whatever, there is no proof of any kind, no evidence of any kind that they would have such a backstory, or just some aspect of a story of a TV show or something, that you try to paint this elaborate story when it's just not there. Fan fiction is a vehicle for doing that, but you gotta be careful. You can write a fan fiction about a character's possible backstory, but you better remember that it's not official. Now, if it, there's a case where 
there is an official backstory given for something one way or another, then that's fine. You, you can easily write a story to go along with that or elaborate or try and interpret it in some manner. But you still gotta remember that that really the creators of the source material that you're trying to pull a story out of, they have the official say, they have the final say in how things happen, how things play out. So it's like this, forcing headcanon in, or forcing your fan theories, trying to, trying to convince yourself or convince other people that your own personal fan theory is real. No, you're trying way too hard, and you're trying to effectively play God with the franchise. Yeah. And a, a more recent example of this I heard was Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Fan theory that is honestly kind of weird, kind of out there. One that's not possible at all, because the sense that it's breaking the fourth wall really, really hard. The idea that with Breath of the Wild, all the events of every other game in the series, all the other games in the series prior to Breath of the Wild are all in Link's head. And the only explanation given to any credibility behind this, in the Zelda games, you can name yourself, even though you're always controlling Link, but in Breath of the Wild, first game in the Zelda series where Link is called Link, where you don't get a chance to name him, yet that does not necessarily mean that the other games were in his imagination. It strictly means that they decided it would probably detract from the story way too much if he wasn't called Link. But really, the main reason for it is Breath of the Wild is the first Zelda game to have voice acting. And it just wouldn't work to have that if you were able to give Link a different name. So, no. Yeah, that's, that's an example of a fan theory with no ground to stand on. And it's not even it's not even far enough to be headcanon, it's just a theory that has no substance to it whatsoever. And it's it's just got the whole fourth wall vibe. That's that's one prominent example that I've heard on that. Oh, that's really really everything I have to talk about, so I think I will go ahead and wind things down here, wrap things up. As always, a lot of what I say, pretty much everything I say is my own opinion, my own thoughts or interpretation on something, and I'm probably not the only one who feels a certain way about one of the topics I brought up in this video, but as always, I encourage the difference of opinion as long as it's as long as there's a valid point to it. You know, if you're going to share your own opinion, have some kind of explanation. Don't just outright tell me, oh, you're dumb. And just state your opinion and give some kind of background to it. That's because that's just that's what I like to do. I like to have a discussion rather than a one-sided argument or I start talking about a thing only to get interrupted mid-sentence or just something like that. I like to be mature about it in that sense. But anyway, that's just how I feel about all of this. So, again, I encourage feedback. And until next time, Take care.